Congressman Adam Kinzinger, a member of the House Foreign Relations Committee. And, sir, thank you for your time. Thank you for your service on this September 11th as well. What do you think of the word we're hearing from Tehran? How do we understand that, interpret that? It's no surprise. I mean, keep in mind when this whole deal was being worked out, Iran said that all they wanted to do was have a program for power, for nuclear power, nuclear energy. And uh, now they're using it as a threat. When President Trump, I think, rightly said this was a bad deal, all this did was potentially give us a short window, which in international politics goes by pretty quickly. If you think about the fact that 9-11 was 18 years ago, we basically signed a deal with Iran that lasted 10 years in some cases and 15 years in other restrictions. So we have to have something that's much more long-term that addresses Iran's behavior in the region. After this deal was signed, Iran made its entrance pretty significantly into Syria, into Yemen, into Iraq, and and began destabilizing the whole region with the money we gave them. So they're going to threaten this, which goes to prove, I think, the original point, which is this isn't a program for power. This is a program to develop nuclear weapons and to hold the Middle East and the world hostage. And I think the president is right in saying we're not going to abide by it. Here is the quote from the head of the uh, Iran Atomic Agency. This is what he said. He said he, meaning Donald Trump, thinks he's powerful and therefore he has the right to make any decisions he wishes. But I think the world has changed and I don't think that logic works anymore, end quote. Do you think this administration with John Bolton and others, are they in a position to change Iran's behavior? Yeah, and it's, it's, you know, I think Iran would be smart to say, hey, they have a lot of tools at their disposal. Let's re-enter negotiations. Europe's not helping us with coming up with economic rescue packages for Iran because they're desperate for the economic activity. But I think Iran would be very wrong to misjudge the seriousness that this president, that John Bolton, that Mike Pompeo have in saying we're going to address this issue. There are a lot of things we can do. There are further economic sanctions. There's ways to push back against them in their proxy wars, for instance, in Syria. Um, And lastly, there is a military option. And while we're not advocating for that today, the fact that a significant and robust military option against Iran's nuclear facilities exists uh, is something that should compel all these parties, including and especially Iran, to the table to negotiate a broader, more comprehensive yeah. deal. Let's, let's see how that works. In the meantime, you've got this story that's brewing in Syria, and it's significant, too. The U.S. has issued strong warnings toward the Assad regime, toward Russia as well. Do not take action in this province north of um, Damascus. There's concern with three million civilians. If you go after tens of thousands of rebel fighters there, you might win the war ultimately, but at what cost? What do you think we do that's right. now? I, well, look, Assad has destroyed his country just like his father did, but this one's even worse. A lot of dead children, a lot of dead people, um, major movements in migration, and an attack on Idlib will do will make everything else kind of look like small potatoes, including the death of children, including the, the refugees. There's a lot of refugees there that were actually from other parts of Syria. So I think, look, we're, we're kind of beyond the point where the U.S. can intervene in the middle of Syria, but what we can do, I think, is declare Idlib a no-fly zone. I'm not convinced that's going to happen. We definitely can do like the president has done, which is said chemical weapons have no place on the battlefield and haven't since World War I, not on the battlefield. And we enforce that red line that President Obama failed to and then drive all the parties to the negotiating table. When it's all said and done, Syria is probably not going to look like it did 10 years ago. But if we can have a place for people that want democracy, and obviously it appears Assad's going to survive, even though I hope he doesn't, and uh, we can remove foreign troops from Syria as long as Russia and Iran go too. And that's, I think, what the successful result will be. Some of the watch clearly has not been resolved. Uh, there are those who are issuing strong warnings about chemical weapons being used again. Let's hope that's not the case. Adam Kinzinger, thank you for your time back home in Illinois. Thank you, sir. God bless.